Day two of the athletics here at the San Paolo Stadium at the uh, 60th anniversary of the Summer World University Games. The Universidad is well and truly in play here at the athletics stadium. Well, the start of the two big sprint finales. We start off with the women, the 100 meters final. The very first title won by an Italian, Juicy Leone. She won the double at the first modern university at in Turin back in 1959. 60 years later, we will find out who will be the latest champion. Someone to Sky in one then. Hobbs in two. Quay in three. Chand in four. Del Ponte in five. Seven. Abdus Salam six. Cora seven. Rosa eight. And we are away straight away. And Chand has made a vicious start out of the blocks. The Indian going very quickly at the moment. Chand, now the fastest woman in India, is going to take gold at the Universiad. Del Ponte made a late charge for glory, but just couldn't quite get there. And Dute Chand of India has become a world champion, a Universiad champion. And Del Ponte, who was the fastest into the final, will have to make do with the silver. Well, what a race that was. You can see here what a bullet start it was by Chan. She got out of the blocks so quickly. Everybody else really stunned. On the outside, Rosa tried to keep up, and she faded towards the end, over-rotated as they headed towards the line and lost out on the medal podium because of it. But Chan compact, driving forward. Really brilliant racing. And she comes through to take the gold medal. Well, Chan, who was the double 2018 Asian Games silver medalist, she's just five foot six. She said it does affect her in some races, but this one it didn't. She got married this year as well. And it's turning out to be a very fine 2019 for Dute Chand. The men's 100 metres. The shortest of the finals. But we will find out who is the fastest student in the world. And Carlos Nascimento does not start. And so that is a shame. Volko in one. Asimota in two. Pereira in four. Van Vick in five, Camillo six, Zaleski in seven, and Miyamoto in lane eight. There is silence in the stadium this time as they settle into their blocks. Sad. And we're underway, and it's a good start by the Canadian Asamoto, but now coming through on this outside, the Brazilian Camilo. Camilo's coming away from this, and the Brazilian is going to streak to gold ahead of Van Wyck. Gold for Brazil, silver for South Africa. 10.1. And Camilo doesn't quite need the personal best that he's got to get the victory, but he had comfortably the speed he needed. Well, the man who was fifth at the World Junior Championships three years ago, a couple of national titles for the 20-year-old as well. This is his first senior global championships. He was eighth in the World Youth Championships back in 2015 at 100 metres before just missing out on a medal in the 200 at the South American Championships in the same year. So Camillo ahead of Van Wyck in 10.23 with Donasciamento beating Jan Volko to the bronze medal by just four hundredths of a second. But the goal goes to Camillo. The men have come out for the longest of the track events at this championships, the 10,000 metres. There's a nice mix of uh, nationalities from Argentina to Australia, Belgium, Canada, China, the Czech Republic, Denmark and Italy and the Netherlands from Europe. China, of course, from the south, from the Far East, Japan also coming from Asia as well. The Africans represented by Uganda, South Africa, as well as Ethiopia this time around.
Uganda took the men's title at the World Cross Country Championships this year. Not sure we're likely to see something similar this evening, though. 25 laps then of the San Paolo Stadium track to find out who has the best endurance on track. Number 36 for Hiroki Abe of Japan and 381, another Japanese athlete. No Moroccans in this one. There was a Moroccan winner back in 2007, Mohamed Fadil, who became the third double winner in the Thai capital, Bangkok, as he added a 10,000 metres to his half marathon. Very often you will find that the, uh, the students that come and enter the 10,000 will then go on and take on the half marathon as well, unless they win it, of course, and then they probably take the day off. We have two Canadian runners on the race, Farah Abdul Karim and another one, Benjamin Kreisner. Well, last night we saw a Chinese victory in the women's race, Zhang Deshun from the Tianjin Normal University. And she has a teammate in this race, Chi Chao, who also goes to the uh, Tianjin Normal University. Hasn't got a personal best underneath 30 minutes, though, so it's probably unlikely that we'll see the same thing. He did go to the Half Marathon World Championships last year and uh, was well down the order. Universiade record stands to uh, Stefan Freigang, who won in Sheffield in 1991 in uh, the game's record, 28 minutes, 15.84. Walshut then still leads. First major championships for the 21-year-old. He was turned 21 just a couple of months ago. That's a he too man on the rise. He's uh, picked up a few victories this season in Myrtle Beach, Rock Hill in the United States. Uh, he's uh, got a PB indoors. Picked up a 3,000 meters PB in just outside eight minutes before breaking his 5,000 meters. Personal best in Charlottesville in Virginia and his uh, 10,000 meters PB went. Would you believe it? In a heat in Jacksonville, Florida. For he uh, ended up 19th in the uh, NCAA Championships in uh, Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas taking over from Eugene this year. So then approaching halfway. Awadi finally takes up the running again as Valcher just gets the chance to just take a rest and sit on his shoulder. Kakeke is as near to the front as he's been. And Abdul Kari, well, he's been there or thereabouts all the way through. He's quite happy, though, to let others take the pace. The Ethiopian there is um, Ashinafi Tadese Bifa. Ethiopia with such a rich history in distance running. You don't very often see them, though, at the World University Games. He's around about 20 metres back, though. The 19-year-old. All great experience for him. 5,000 metres reached then in 1450, so they are on 29.40 pace at the moment. All of these men are quite capable of running those kinds of times. And with the temperature dropping away, they'll probably be able to do it again. It's just the humidity that will get in their way. And even that feels a bit better now that the temperature is dropping. 12 laps to go. Now then, they will start thinking. 10,000 metres is about getting to halfway, a little bit like the marathon is about getting to halfway. And then you start to think tactics, you start to think, when would be a good time to go? Should I leave it? Do I want to risk the long route, or do I want to try and make sure I've got some energy for the last lap? Awani comes across. So too does Val no, Valchut decides not to take a sponge. This group now beginning to break away. There's 
Mugabe. As we said, he's probably the favourite in terms of times, so the only man under 28 minutes. And he decides that he needs to take to the front for the first time in the race. Just stretching it out, just seeing what the others have got, whether or not they decide to go with him. Just finding out just how fit they feel. Weidstrand has answered the challenge and has gone right up behind him again. Abe looks up at the screen just to see what's going on. Rwani is there, Balshut is there, Abdul Karim is there. And so too the other South African Kakeke is there as well. The other Japanese now finding the uh, pace too hot, Nishiyama. So uh, that really reflected by his personal best time in relation to his teammate. So he doesn't quite have the legs to go this fast in these conditions. Abe looks across at Owane. They're starting to lap for the runners now. Past the Vesuvius. Which is looking quite splendid now that the night sky has uh, made it really luminous. Clever idea. Vesuvius, of course, which dominates the Bay of Naples. Which you can see from the promenade along the front of this lovely city in Campania. The Pisu Hotel has got a grandstand view of it, as well as the Castel, which is right outside as well. There are so many things to do here in, uh, in Naples. Uh, one of the top ones for me is being getting lost. Always to be recommended. Of course, in the days of GPS, it doesn't help you because the streets are so narrow here that you just can't find your way around. And the locals don't help, they send you the wrong way. Nevertheless, it was very enjoyable, and I would do it again. These runners don't know where they're going. Very easy, just keep going round in an oval shape 25 times until you reach the finish line. And hopefully, no one's in front of you. Valchet is back in front again. Rani is looking very, very good as well. Nobody really looks like they're suffering yet. Arve has got the most incredibly neat hair still. Oh, and, uh, oh yep, little word there. <laughs> Abdul Karim not too happy there with uh, the South African, who was cutting the corner a little bit on him. And having another word with him. Canadian thinks the best way of dealing with that is to try and go in front, but the South Africans not letting him. <laughs> South African doing well here, just trying to boss the race. He's right by him. They'll be very lucky they don't clip each other. <laughs> Head past the Finn, Eero Saleva. It's been a long time since the glory days of Finland and the flying Finns all those years ago. It would be nice to see Finland get back into distance running. But with the East Africans so strong these days, it's hard to see how it could happen. Awani comes through then, eight laps to go. Still looking very comfortable. Abdul Karim right behind him as to... Kakena, who's right behind his teammate, Adrian Valschut. Adrian Valschut. Looking to push into the world of uh, distance running. There were no times actually registered for him on the start list. Had to go via another route to find out what he's been up to. Abe now. 7,000 metres reached in 2043. They are still pushing around about 29, 
and three-quarter pace. Helped out by the fact that they're all taking their turns in leading, except for the Canadian. Oh, their little push again. This time it's Awani's time to look around at the Canadian, who he believes is the culprit this time. He had to push wild shut. And you can see that they all want to just get that little extra inch of advantage. Tension beginning to ramp up now. Nobody yet has made a burst. Kokenak goes to the front as Balchuk comes out to get some more water. He hasn't taken some for a while. He's decided to go for the bottles. So he needs a drink. Just a little one. Just to get rid of the dryness in the mouth. The two South Africans join each other now at the front who control the pace. Arve goes back to fifth. Awani in fourth. Abdul Karim in third at the moment. Looking to take victory for Canada. All of them looking to take the title that was won by Uganda last time out by Sadiq Bahati. And all of them still look reasonably comfortable. But then they haven't burst yet. No one's actually tested to see how much stamina the others have got left yet. Into the last third of the race. And uh, Kokena still leading his teammate, Valsha, with Awani there. Abdul Karim of Canada. And Abe, who's the big threat to all of them, at the back for Japan. Another look up at the uh, big screen. He uh, went to the European Juniors, 14th in 2015. He went to the cross country championships as well, where he finished 29th in the under 23s. There he is at the back there in the red of Japan. 2016 saw him go to the World Juniors. Where, uh, he didn't really figure very highly, in all honesty. Got his personal best last year in 2018, in November. And it was a massive drop as well. He knocked nearly one and a half minutes off his uh, 10,000 metre time from his previous personal best, which he'd set in Yokohama in 2017. This year, he's not been in that sort of form again. However, his form is enough to make him a contender in this race. So then, Kakena now, a little bit of a lead. They go past another of the back markers, and there's no change in the order. We're still waiting. Somebody needs to make a decision as Patel doesn't make it easy for them to go past. Nearly falls off the curb inside before coming back on again. I remember the days of the 10,000 metres when athletes who were lapped used to move out and allow the leaders through, but that doesn't seem to happen anymore. literally queuing up to make a move but without actually doing it I don't know if you could hear that the crowd shouting Italia they want Awani as Abe responds to that by going to the front Abe at some point you would think has got to get going because he knows but if in a fast race, he's got fast and everyone. Oh, there's a problem there. Valshot nearly fell. And again, him and 
Farah Abdul Karim have not been getting on all the way through this race. The Canadian goes into second place now. Arbe makes the, the move. This could be it now then. The move for gold is being made. Arbe makes the stride for home with three laps to go. 1,200 metres between him and gold. Falsha goes into second place after that near fall. Kakana is in third and... Abdul Karim is in fourth and now Awani, the Italian, suddenly looks in trouble. That little burst by the Japanese seems to have taken the Italian by surprise and he's already looking up at the screen as if he's got nothing left. He's more interested in what's behind him. Abe now making the move, trying to get the goal. He looks full of running, doesn't he? Full of running. He hasn't broken the two South Africans. Kakana is having a great race. Very little known about him, but he is certainly in there. Valchuk perhaps is the bigger danger to Arbe. Arbe just backed off again. They've got rid of the Canadian, Farah Abdul Karim, and the Italian, Ilias Ouani. But if they slow down too much, they'll let them back into it again. Arbe, again, 800 metres to go. A 66 second lap. Now that's better. One of the athletes has moved out and allowed this race to, to go on properly. Very nice that by Ero Saleva of Finland to allow them to go through. Abe though, all oh, they coming up to a difficult one here. Four men they're going to lap. The difficult here is if one of them moves out and the others don't. Abe's going to have to go round the outside as they hit the bends, and they'll have to go the long way around. Valshut now looks like he's gone. He's now drifted around 10 metres back and it's down to Kakana. Kakana against Arve. Arve has a look around. Arve nearly stopped. By the, that was a strange piece of tactics. He invited the South African to go in front of him. I don't think he wants to be in front when they hit the bell. He wants to chase the rabbit. Kakana leads then. Valshut hasn't given up, he's still there, he's beginning to close them down again because of the fact that Arbe closed it down the pace, but they go through the bell. 28 minutes, they're going to be way under 30 minutes, but who's going to get the gold? Kakana leads at the moment, but Abe again, he's playing with them, it's almost like Mo Farah tactics here from the Japanese. Right on the tail. Valshut has nearly fought his way back into contention. Kakana, though, tries to burst. 250 metres to go. Abe's with him, though. He's still keeping his powder dry. Or is he beginning to struggle? South Africa against Japan. Valshut this time is spent. He will have to settle for the bronze. But it's between the Japanese, Abe and Kakana. And here comes Abe, then, round the outside. The fastest man in the field still won't get past. This is a remarkable race by Kakana. And Kakana is now printing away. This is a shock. And South Africa are going to take the gold. What a run this is. Mokafade, Milton Kakana takes gold for South Africa. Abe takes the silver. Valshut takes the bronze. It's a one and three for the South African nation. What a race by Kakana. The South African we didn't think was going to win has.